Welcome to Commander Tune-Ups. Today's Tesa Karolov deck was submitted by our first Gourmet Bagel patron, John Lester. In this video, we're going to show you how to take advantage of Double Death Triggers. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ. Together, that's nitpicking nerds. You know that by now. And before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel because our subscribers are 10% more likely to usurp power from their dead ancestors. Agreed. Disclaimer, ghosts aren't real. Commander Tune-Ups is a series where we take your user-submitted deck and upgrade it under your restrictions. Today, our only restriction was a $50 budget. To explain, because we've had confusion in the past, $50 budget means that we take your deck for what you have already, so all the cards that are in it don't count towards the budget. And we do adds and cuts, and cards that we add to the deck count toward that budget. So. That's the only restriction for this deck, so let's get into reading Tesa. She is 2 white black for a 2-4 human advisor. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Creature tokens you control have vigilance and lifelink. So, double death triggers is the main focus of this deck. We get to do cool things with things like blood artists that we'll get to, and there's a lot of cards that when they die, they do things. Yeah. Um, the lifelink is just gravy on top of the... This is gravy. It's just gravy on top of the mashed potatoes. I don't even really care about it. Yeah, it's not a big deal, but there are some tokens in this deck that will gain advantage from that. But the, the real, the real bread and butter is doubling those death triggers. Double death triggers. Let's get into the first category, which is that. Uh, what is it? Death triggers? No. Double death triggers. Pitiless plunder, which is three and a black for a one four. Whenever another creature you control dies, you get a treasure that sacks for any color mana. With this guy out, you're sacrificing creatures, creatures are dying incidentally, you're gonna get a bunch of treasure. Yeah, and this guy's not a target at all because it'd be weird if they were targeting your pitiless plunderer. He doesn't look like a target, but he's super annoying. He's super annoying. It's like Blood Artist meets Smothering Tide. That is, those are some big shoes to fill for this big man. Big shoes to fill. He's yeah. filling them. I don't, good. I don't think he fills those shoes, Card's good. but... With Tesa, you make two treasures every time a creature dies. I'm not saying he's not good, and especially in this deck, but I don't think he fits the shoes of Smothering Tide Blood Artist. Blood Artist isn't good in every deck. Smothering Tide, however, is good in every deck, turns yeah, out. That card's insane. All right, what are the next couple? The four cards that make you draw some cards when creatures die are Grim Horror Specs, Midnight Reaper, Dark Prophecy, and Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp is insane. <laughs> draw four. I mean, everybody knows that, so that's like level zero, but... Dark Prophecy is also cool. Uh, yep, these are really good. They're just <laughs> we're here for the you're here for the insight. These are really good. These are really good because you're doubling the death trigger, so you're gonna get you're gonna get this to happen twice every single time, which is insane. So that I mean I wouldn't put Dark Prophecy in many decks, but I would put it in a deck where it said draw two whenever a creature dies. Yeah, that is true. So, and I think you lose two. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. Darn it! But make sure you have one of these off if you're. Thinking about going off. You can't really go off if you're not drawing cards. That's true. Yeah, but you have a lot of them, so yeah. thank goodness. Thank goodness. Grave Pact, Dictator Erebos. We've said them a million times. They, whenever you sacrifice a creature, each opponent has sacrificed two creatures. Uh, Grave Pact, Dictator Erebos, they work as uh, Plague Wind type effects in decks like this. They double, right? And they double. Yeah, whenever a creature you control That's what I thought. I was is like, put into the graveyard. And opposed dying to causes, yeah. Yeah and, yeah. yeah, and dying causes that trigger. So, really cool one. Vindictive Lich. Put a skull clamp on this bad boy. Draw four. Make someone lose five. Make someone lose five. Make someone sacrifice a creature. Make someone else sacrifice a creature. Make someone else whatever. Discard two cards. Discard two cards. And this card's crazy. And just keep going like this. Card's funny. If you can recur it, it's just... Well, probably the most fun card in this deck. It's Aside from Matter Reshaper, which is also in this deck. Uh, plenty of wasted cats, so don't worry about that. When it dies, you at least draw two cards. Or you can put two lands in play. Just ramp. Like, there's no ramp in Orsov. There's no ramp like this. Burnish Shark can't do that. Burnish Shark's way cooler. Burnish Shark's way better. But this can't can't do this. It, it, yeah, nothing can do what this card nothing does. Nothing can do what this card does. Deal with it. That being said, that yeah. It's my favorite card in the deck. It's BZ's favorite card in the deck. I wouldn't have put it in, but BZ, he fought for it, and I it's in the deck. If I built this deck, I'd put it in, 100%. Our next category. We know what the creatures do when they die, but how are they supposed to die? We need to control. We need to have control over when our things die. Mm. Sacrificing creatures. Mr. Seer, Carrion Feeder, the two one-drop creatures that are sacrifice elements. These are both very, 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 very good. Efficient. Efficient. Playing a one-mana creature that also lets you get rid of any creature you want at any time. It lets you respond to removal. These creatures are good for so many reasons, and people just sometimes forget that people these... sleep on them. 
Yeah. Visceral Seer giving you that scry one every time you set a creature is so strong, especially if you're comboing. Like, you can just put, you can just get those cards. Dig for what you need. Yeah, exactly. Find the cards you need. Carrying Feeder, um, just awesome, right? It just gets pretty big. Just remember that it can't block. People forget that it can't block. It definitely can't block. And Ranger Vios uh, package added to this deck can go get these. Turns can... out they're one drops. Ranger Vios is amazing. Yep. It can go get these two one drops. It can go get other stuff. Among there's, other things. Stitcher Supplier. Um, there's other stuff. Uh, I, can't, I can't even think of what it is. I know that there's... I can think of all of them off the top of my head, but it, this isn't the time for it, so I will mention them later. Sacrificing creatures for mana. Phyrexian Altar. Ashnod's Altar. Now, Ashnod's Altar and Phyrexian Altar, we're pretty sure they're the best cards in the deck. That means they're today's Gourmet Bagel. Both get you mana every single time. You're gonna get the double death triggers for anything you have in the field, like a Blood Artist, uh, maybe the Pitiless Plunderer. I mean, mostly you just get mana to spend on more creatures because you're drawing cards, hypothetically. Mm -hmm. You're drawing cards, you're making mana. That's the perfect recipe to just go churn through your whole deck. Okay, we should mention, Phyrexian Altar was added to this deck. However, it is not included in the budget of cards we added to this deck. Joe, why is that? Because, as a Gourmet Bagel patron, you get one card of $20 value or less sent to you, signed by us. Which is what we are sending to Mr. Jonathan. It will be, we will probably take a picture of it, put it on our Twitter before we send oh, yeah. it out. Oh yeah. And then, uh, so if you want to see that, head over to our Twitter and follow us on Twitter. And uh, he's going to get that card in the mail probably in the next month or so. So another sacrifice outlet, Yehani, Undying Partisan. This is just a three drop. It's just another one where you don't have to pay any mana to sacrifice a creature. It's just a three drop. But also grows when your opponent's creatures die. And it can be indestructible and survive four waves. It's just a three drop. Just a three drop. Moving it's, on. It's just a three Moving drop. Moving on, who even cares? Priest of the Forgotten Gods, new one from, I think, uh, Rav Ravnica Allegiance. One, two for two. Or maybe Guilds of Ravnica, who really cares? One, two for two. <laughs> You can tap it and sack two other creatures, and you make two black mana and draw a card, and each other opponent sacrifices a creature. I was close. Uh, they lose two life and sacrifice a creature. Yep. And it's also, you don't have to target an opponent if you want to buddy up. Uh, yeah, you don't have to have any, everyone <laughs> lose two life. Yeah, it says, uh, like, any number of target any, players. Any number of target players? What a weird wording. You can make yourself lose two life. <laughs> oh, that's true. Any number of target Combo. What a weird card. It's good when you need it. It's a one turn type. Like, it's just going to be worth it. You have enough extra dummies lying around. <laughs> dummies. That, like, they're just, I like the idea of, like, just like. Well, I call them, I call them dorks all the time. I want to start calling them dummies. Dummies? Yeah. There's a card in Hearthstone called Target Dummy. Target dummy. It's just an O2. <laughs> Merciless Executioner and Plate Crafter. Um, well, everyone knows what these cards do. They just enter, and everyone else sacrifices, or everyone sacrifices a thing, and you probably sacrifice one of them. Plate Crafter is just better. Make some discard cards. Yep, Nothing pretend. really crazy going on here. But something crazy that is going on here in Jonathan's deck. A reanimation sub theme, Ooh. which is our next category, entitled Reanimation. Now, he's got a couple little spicy meatballs in here. <laughs> Couple. He's gonna put some cards in the graveyard. Maybe get them all back. Maybe get some of them back. Maybe start going infinite. You know. You know how it be. Anime Dead is the first reanimation spell. This one is really sweet for two mana, and it combos with the next card right away. So I just want to get What's ready. What's the next card? Sun Titan. Sun Titan. Do you know the combo with Sun Titan? Uh, Sun Titan get back Anime Dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sun Titan is. It's great. Serves as um, a Karmic Guide type effect. Karmic Guide also in this deck. Along with Revel Arc, the dynamic duo. Because that means if you give Zack out, you can make infinite death triggers. Yeah, Comic Guide, Revel Arc. If you're playing a sacrifice deck and you're playing white. Yeah, I just, they're in there. It's so hard for. it's. It would be very hard for me not to include those two cards in the, yeah, a no. deck like this. Because they're so. The combo is just there. And both these cards are great by themselves. They're both good, yeah. I mean, with the. This Comic Guide wouldn't be very good. But the reanimation stuff thing makes it good. Like we have Ashen Rider as a big fatty mm -hmm. to get, Sun Titan. Some others, not not important. They're great. They're great. They're really good. <laughs> anime Dead, don't forget you can target other things. You don't have to wait for the perfect thing in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. If there's like a Jenga Taxi, you just, all right, I'll, I'll take, take it. I'll take your Jenga Taxi, make it a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. Because that thing has awesome. the weirdest low toughness. Any, any Praetor. Take any Praetor out of the graveyard for two minutes. Yeah. That's, that's, maybe maybe not Urbrass. I'll take two minute Urbrass. Eh, I won't. I'll, I'll take I'll, I'll take a, 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 an Animate Dead in my hand. Yes, Psalm Smolacro <laughs> instead. 
Yeah, I'll take the definitely same. takes talent instead of Herb. I, yeah, yeah, and also double. We can double his death trigger, so that's way oh, better. Yeah. That's so, a way better than Herb. So, sorry, Herb. Herb just got completely shat on by the nerds. One more enchantment. Phyrexian Reclamation. It's one in a, or it's one black. You can pay one in a black and pay two life to return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. Mm -hmm. This can let you go off. If maybe we're making a bunch of treasures, a bunch of mana, double the treasures. I don't know. No, you seems, do know. Seems pretty. Oh, you're even telling them how to win the game. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but here's how I know. But this is the next category. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. Win the game. Uh, let's start with. Well, that's the deathless. Death. <laughs> you cannot say this card. Debt to the deathless is in this deck. It is a way to filter all of this excess mana, colorless or otherwise, treasures, whatever, into a huge X spell. Yep. So, Ashnaz Altar, Phyrexian Altar, sacrificing, get, sacrificing all your creatures that you have, so you've made a lot of tokens, but it's like, secure the waste. Pawn of Umumab gives your guys a second life, so it's like, okay, sacrifice my Playcrafter, get a Scion, sacrifice that, now you have four colorless mana. It gives your guys not only a second life, but a third life if you have Taze out. Who even knows what's going on? This there's, is crazy. There's so many. Yeah, Pawn of is real good in this deck, and you can just, so you have to make so much mana, and there's so many ways, Smothering Tithe. Another way to get a ton of treasures really quick. If you have not played Smothering Tide in EDH, get it in your EDH it's deck. It's brutal. The card is insane. I played it on turn three, the other game, and then two turns later, I just played Death of the Deathless for 14. Yeah, it's... And I, I didn't even ramp. Yeah, I mean, it was insane. And that's the power of this card. There's so many different things that this card can do. Oh, yeah. We mentioned it before. We'll mention it one last time. Cruel Celebrant, Blood Otters, Zulipar Cutthroat. They're draining. I mean, that eventually adds up. They're just going to eventually, your opponent's going to die. These are just... These are always going to be strong win cons in a deck like this. Blood Artist, Zulipar Cutthroat, Cruel Celebrant. These, <laughs> these cards just need to be talked about because they're so good. People like, I feel like a lot of people don't even like these cards sometimes. They're okay. Like in the right, I'm not a huge fan. in your sacrifice decks. In your decks where you have a sacrifice theme, you want these cards. Well, you need a bunch of creatures. Yeah. Well, I, like I, my sacrifice deck is a little more combo -y. So I don't really care. And you still have this in there. I have one Blood Artist because that's one way to go infinite. But I just mean like, you don't necessarily need them if you're not producing a ton of dudes or going infinite. I'm not saying you necessarily- there's, there's other ways to win. These guys aren't like the best of the best in the universe. They're just really good in this deck. It's not about being the best of the best. It's in a sacrifice deck, these cards are extremely good. They're don't good. sleep on them. No. You'll probably bend them or damage them. Ah, uh, yep, if you sleep on them. Hilarious. Funny. Mm -hmm. Funny. Stand on them. Funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Reassembling Skeleton, Commander Staple, and Blood Soap Champion, other Commander Staple. What do these things do? A Reassembling Skeleton is a 1 and a black for a 1 1, and you can pay 1 and a black to return it from the grave right to the battlefield tapped. That sounds horrible. Yes, and Blood Soap Champion is a 1 mana 2 1 that if you attack this turn, you can pay the same cost to return it to the battlefield. I think it's untapped, but it can't block. Who really cares? The main thing is you're paying 2 mana. To get a creature back on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can sacrifice this, sacrifice this with, let's say, either of the altars, and you have Piteous Plunderer, Plunderer, you get two treasures and one mana. If or, you have Tasa Carol Fog. Right, with Tasa. Two treasures and one mana, or two treasures and two mana. That means infinite mana. Infinite treasures, infinite colorless mana, infinite colored mana, whatever you're doing. Because mm -hmm. you get pay two mana, then you get three mana off of dying, and you're in the same spot. You're gonna get a ton of mana. Dead to the Deathless. There's a couple other ones in here. We'll mention them later. Um, but any infinite mana, I mean, yeah, you're, you're living. Any, you also have infinite death triggers. So yeah, infinite, others, it doesn't even matter. Infinite death triggers are also super important. Yeah, worth mentioning here because again, you're just gonna kill anyone with a blood artist. You're gonna draw your whole deck with like Midnight Reaper. Not so much. Maybe. Watch out because just sacrifice that first. Yeah, the Midnight Reaper will kill you because mm -hmm. uh, you will lose one life. But you can be, you can still draw like 39 cards. Yeah, draw first. like, draw like seven, twelve cards. Then just keep going off and they lose. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a cute little combo. Well, we, we, I originally looked at the deck. I went, wow, that's my first cut. And I was like, uh-uh. And he's like, no, wait, let's see if it combos. So we went through, like, okay, it combos pretty well. Yeah. So we'll, we'll keep it in. It seems like an actual cool combo and yeah. an actual win con. Add a one drop. Does the same thing. Ranger Vios can find it. There's nothing Ranger Vios can't do. All right. The final way to win the game. We have cards in our graveyard. They're going to pile up pretty quick. Get them all back right at once, destroy everybody immediately. Living Death, Rise of the Dark Realms. Yes. Oh, the Rise combos are. So, er, the Living Death combos and Rise, I guess, because it does the same thing. It does it even more for you, actually. Yeah. Are so good when you have those sack outlets. Once, I mean, you might just have enough to create lethal. 
If you get everyone's creatures from everywhere, what are they supposed to do? You just have enough bodies, and sacrificing isn't going up, doesn't go on the stack. It's the cost. So you like stack all my guys. Triggers uh, plenty. Living death is so good. It's like I keep thinking about this card recently. I've been thinking about this card a lot recently for some reason. Having dreams about it. Yeah, I've been dreaming about living death, and like there's just so many cool things you can do with this. I agree. It, like not in this deck, but you can come up with like Eternal Witness and just do it infinitely. Yeah. They're so and then like Progan Drake in other colors is, yeah, it gets really weird. There's so many cool things. And in this deck, you can just there's so many death triggers. You and like you get to do the cute thing of like, I'll let Taysa go to the graveyard. But why? <laughs> yeah, sack why my, would you let him go to the graveyard? If you sack your old team before living death, I know that's common. Just don't just don't like play around counter magic. Oh be careful. If they can counter it, just don't sack your old team. Yeah. It's not worth the extra like three cards and four life. And uh, if you put it on the stack, make sure you hold priority if you want to sack your team. Yeah, don't just go like, oh, does it resolve? Yep. Okay, now I'll sack my team. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't, you can't do that. Yeah. Um, see our see our video on uh, EDH etiquette. We we'll yes. talk about it more. You absolutely cannot do that. Let's talk for a second about the ads and cuts we didn't mention. The original average CMC of this deck was 3.32, and we brought it all the way down to 3.05. That's a total of 19 changes overall. Our total price of additions, $39.12. Infinite mana, hanger back walker, secure the waste. Uh, those are big payoffs. Uh, yeah, for some reason, if you can only get infinite mana, you now have infinite creatures also. <laughs> yeah, which I don't know what they would do for you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's also they force not necessarily an answer. infinite mana. If you have like, if you can make 20 mana, and you get all these blood artist triggers from Ashland's altar or whatever. Mm -hmm. Turn it into twenty more creatures. The game's over. Helps you get that last leg. That last little. Oof. And hang your back walker. When it dies, you get doctors. So you get twice as many doctors. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. sweet. And we just and you know, hang your back walker's mana cost is zero, which is one or less, which means ranger viewers can find it because there's nothing that card can't do. Uh, there's a lot of things that card can't do. That being said, it's still really good <laughs> with the things they can do. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna trash talk it on this video. I'm not trash talking it. I'm <laughs> just saying it can't do everything. I'm saying it can't uh, be Liliana of the Veil vale, make you sacrifice a creature. It can't do that. But if it tutors up a one drop, that when it dies, everyone <laughs> sacrifices a creature. Who knows? We left the mana base alone, mostly. We mm -hmm. just swapped out a couple tap lands for. A well, we landscape. cut two lands. And we swapped out some tap lands for Miri Landscape. Yep. Miri Landscape's awesome. And uh, it's super cheap. Now we thought the land count was a little high, but a little, little lower. 37. Well, bring it down to 35, which I might even go one further. But we're not about to micromanage somebody's mana base. So 35 is fine. Cut cards that didn't do enough. I don't think Death Creator is what you want. There's not even a way to pay life mm -hmm. in this deck. Despite the fact that he can be tutored by Ranger videos. Uh, uh, Zhao Hu, the one-eyed guy where you sacrifice him. I know Jonathan mentioned he like loves this card. You can leave it in, but we just wouldn't leave it in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We're not we're not the be-all, end-all. We cut Black Cat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Segway. <laughs> cut Black Cat. We cut Black Cat. Doesn't do enough. Um, even and when it's double with it's Mind Rot. Two, would, you, would you play two, Mind Rot? Two. No one cares about Black Cat. Two win cons we cut, though. Revel and Riches and Blood Chief Ascension. No way to make opponents reliably lose life with Blood Chief Ascension. And Revel and Riches is... Oh, I just feel like it's so unreliable. It's really okay. You know what it reminds... It's expensive. If it was like three mana, then it's not... Do you know what it kind of reminds me of? What? Uh, approach the Second Sun. Where if <laughs> if it's coming to the point where it's going to do anything... You're dead. You're going to become such a huge target that That's it's fair. absurd. Or, it, or it'll just die. And you can't... It's not a positive trade for you if it ever dies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If it was the end step, that'd be way cooler. Yeah, it'd be playable. Yeah, oh, definitely. Uh, I, definitely. Okay, it's not, it's not unplayable. It'd be, it's, it'd be it's insane not, if it was an end step. Yeah, it'd be really good. It'd be hard to stop that. But Chief, uh, this deck doesn't seem like it has enough creatures to go past turn to you, sack two creatures, trigger Blood Artist twice, or you have Taysa and Blood Artist, so you sack one creature, and then pass to them, sack one creature, pass to them, sack one creature. Now it has three counters, and then after that, their creatures have to die for you to get the cute double trigger. Otherwise, it's just okay. Yeah, I, I, I've never been a huge fan of this other than in a... Nekusar is pretty good. Nekusar deck. Which well, has... decks that like inherently you're always taking to for free, no matter what. The video's over. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the deck. We want to give a special shout out to our eight patrons you can see right here. This card is getting very big. And um, I love this deck. Love Jonathan, thanks for being a patron. You guys can also be a patron at Patreon.com slash nitpicking nerds. You're not gonna read their names? You always we read, read their names. names all the time. I, we gotta cut this video. We gotta cut this read, video. Read okay. their names. Do it. Why do I have to do it? You do it. Your turn. Um.
don't know. Yeah. You're putting me on the spot? Mm -hmm. okay. Joe, Joseph, Jordan, Dustin, Adam, Zach, John, Tyler. Bingo. <laughs> I nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Boom. I'm the best. And we're done. You guys are the best. Peace out, Tribe Scout.